worked on. Um, I can just say, I, I watched the film yesterday. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Yay. Yay. I thought it was Fantastic. excellent. I mean, obviously, it's, I'd love to see it on a big screen, but, you know, the global pandemic is making things like that quite difficult at the moment. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I'm going to begin uh, with you, Josephine, actually. Um, and it was just, I know, you've, I'm sure you've spoken about this many times, but it was just about the, where the idea for this film sort of first originated from, and if it's one that's been with you for some time. So the first, well, I guess it initiated with, um, I did, I, you know, I had just an idea for a film, and I was actually, it was about a couple. And then the sort of politics got involved. It was sort of like how to uncut, you know, um, and then the whole Elliot Schlitzer thing, that was a real inspiration for the whole sex work side of things and how that could kind of unravel something in a very kind of, you know, heterosexual kind of dynamic, just how that flips on its head, the whole moral, you know, questions around that, the kind of hypocrisy. I found that interesting. So that kind of, you know, um, then I had a baby and so they had a baby. And um, yeah, and then, I mean, you know, really the whole idea was to sort of do a big story in a small space because I'd, I'd been in pre-production for another much bigger film and that kind of fell through. And so I wanted to, I just wanted to have something that I didn't have to wait years for money, you know, because things can take years in the film industry. So I guess I just wanted something that was a, yeah, a big story in a small space that wasn't production wise, super complicated to have kind of, you know, bring the kind of have more sort of, you know, power in the process, not relying on, you know, big producers and all of that. Yeah. And Emily, I mean, what, what was it that attracted you to this, to this project and this character? She's such a, Alice is a fantastic role for, for an actress to get their t teeth stuck into. You must have had so much um, fun, but also there's so much complexities to her that must have been great to explore. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Actually, when I read the script, it was, I don't know. I, I told Josephine it was it was for me. It was for me. But what what I really like in Alice is that we we don't read this kind of role um, usually. It's it was she was trying to to get free actually to get uh, to become free to get uh, to get the truth to know who she was. We all have all beliefs and. Um, with education, with other our culture, with everything, and uh, sometimes we think that we are in our life, that it's our life, that it we chose that uh, our life, but it's sometimes it's not. And what I really like in Alice uh, in this scenario is that um, um, suddenly there was something really uh, some crash because François <laughs> François with the crash. Grace to that, she uh, eventually she was um, uh, she was becoming it herself. So that's was really yeah. 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 And of course, it's when you delve into this particular um, landscape, and obviously in in French cinema, it's hard to avoid comparisons to like Belle de Jour, you know, <laughs> and, and I mean, but I mean, the films are completely different. But just I mean, I'm just wondering though about how much of an inspiration that was for, for both of you just because it is one of those films that I think for any cinema lover it's like a rite of passage when you're young to go and see that movie and see Catherine Deneuve in that in that role and just wondering about that film as a kind of reference point for, for you guys and, and if you if you if you used it at all when, when creating Alice. I love that film I just love that film but no it wasn't you know, I, of course, you know, it's constant, all the films about, you know, hookers, any film about hookers is going to be, you know, but for me, Alice is not really about the sex work, you know, sex work is used as a, as a, you know, a dramatic motor to kind of discover other things. And so, but yeah, no, yeah, but I love the film. Yeah, it's, I think it's really the same thing. It's, uh, I, I love the vision of the scenario because it was the prostitution is not the, really the subject. It's just a way for Alice to to earn money actually, and it's really rare to uh, to see uh, prostitution like that. I mean, usually they're victims or you know they're so it was it's different. It's not kind of a of course, I, I, I hope I will have Catherine Deneuve's career, of course, but, you know, the, both films are not, you know, 
Yeah, because was that one of the part? I mean, it's so pragmatic, isn't it? And so um, well, the, the fact that she sort of gets into prostitution is, yeah, it's pragmatic. And it, it's something, like you said, it's just a way to make money and just to make ends meet. And like you said, usually the portrayal in cinema is, is the victim. It's, it's, it's some, you know, and I just wondered about changing uh, the perspective. And also um, if that was based on the research you did from people you met and people you spoke to, did you find that the Alice we see in this movie is actually much more of an authentic portrayal of, of, of what it is like for, for women in that industry? I'm not sure um, you can completely gen generalize um, I, because I, I, I guess I really sought out workers who are at the high end because there's such a, you know, and, and actually they're harder to talk to, but I, I have particularly two and one I'm still friends with, you know, we're in contact today. Um, and so, um, you know, I mean, there is a group of, you know, women who get, who choose it to, for whatever reason, whether it's to put themselves through school to pay off, you know, um, the house, whatever. And um, yeah, they have other things, other things going on in their life and um, they're not identified, they, they don't identify with it, you know? And because I think once you get up into the higher echelons, you're not getting, you know, five clients a day, you're lucky to get two a week, you know? So it doesn't, it's much less about, I don't know. It's yeah, because I was wondering too about, because I mean, there were some, some scenes, some uncomfortable scenes with, with the, some of her clients in the movie. And it just made me think about, do, do you think that there's enough uh, being done in France and just in around the world really to, to protect the safety of women in that industry? Because you realize how vulnerable they can be and at the mercy of their clients, when, and, and, which was obviously exposed in some of the, the sequences in this movie. Um, well, it's, it's interesting because in the, in the Nordic countries, when they tried to change the laws, um, about you know instead of finding the girls they find the the clients and that was all done in sort of a kind of a feminist you know um kind of ideology to and actually that was really bad for the workers because actually it took it took it you know more underground and and clients were more scared so so um, i don't know it's yeah it's i mean it, again it depends on you know you can go from very high end where you've got five star hotels and all the clients are scanned you know, so we know, you know, it's very low risk to on the streets, in a park, you know, behind a public toilet, you know, I mean, I don't know. So, yeah. Yeah. It really yeah. In France, it, it's, it's like that. In France, it's a total like that. In four five years, you have a low. And uh, so, yeah, it's uh, uh, prostitute are victims and clients can uh, pay a fine. So it's, it's dangerous for a lot of workers and this, this fed it, so it so they have to hide they have to so yeah it's not the, and when we see actually the government in france now i'm not sure that uh women and especially prostitutes will be heard you know um, because uh we it's tolerated but we don't want to face it we don't want to face it. it's decriminalized it's decriminalized yeah i mean so you do yeah anyway yeah, but because uh, don't pay taxes. Yeah, because even though I was obviously I meant, meant speaking about those themes, uh, the film does maintain a sort of certain lightness to it, particularly in the early stages. Um, but at the same time, there are some scenes that are incredibly quite. I mean, some of the the scenes, particularly with Martin and, and yourself, with Emily, are really quite dark and quite difficult to sort of sit through. And I was just wondering about the balancing tonally uh, for both of you between the kind of light and the kind of and the dark, which obviously in many ways is reflective of the real world, but was it quite tonally, was it a, a tricky balance for you both to, to get right on this project? I think that's a lot to do with casting. I think Emily is, can really glide between comedy and drama. I think, you know, she has a talent for that. And it's, it's sort of something I feel that you're, that not all actors can do. And that was very um, key in the casting. So, you know, um, Emily is the key to, to that tonally. And then of course, I mean, I could talk more specifically about you know certain scenes that go from high to low and i found that and it was very scary because you're really shifting genre you know from almost slapstick comedy into melodrama and and i and that was really tricky and in the editing room we really had to work that and i found actually music there's a piece of music that for me was I was able to bridge you know was the final key to be able to make that work so yeah that's from my end yeah, how was it for you, Emily? Um, 
was when it was really dark with the the the, the, the scene that we shoot with uh, uh, François with Martin uh, Suave, who is a brilliant British actor, I think, is uh, it, it, it had the the time to prepare himself, so he made an amazing preparation. So when we came on set, he was really uh, solid and here, and he had suggestion. It, it was also when we had some scene that we, we shoot at the beginning of the, of the shooting, the, the first month, and uh, it, it was, uh, I, I think about one in particular, and it, it was asking me, is, can we go further? Can we go? So we, we talked a lot and it, it, it was, uh, you know, with respect and it was uh, with all the team also around us. We, and uh, with Josephine, it was really bienveillant, um, it was, um, um, so it was not really hard to get into that and to find the truth of the scene. And uh, I mean, it was, yeah, we were looking a bit, but it, we, it was easy because of my partner and all the team and, you know, so to explore all the dark, uh, you know, sides of, uh, of the, the, the relationship between uh, Ofo and Alice. And, and also we have the light after with Chloe and, and beautiful Paris. And, mm. you know, so, yeah, because yeah. Yeah, you're right. I mean, how were those scenes of Martin? You know, the more, the big kind of raw, quite, they're quite raw, some of those scenes. You really have to let yourself go in those movies. I mean, there's one scene, obviously, when I think he slaps himself in the face. And it's, it's like, a, it's almost like watching two actors on stage because it's such an, inc it's this incredible scene. Was, was that quite... Well, how was that quite fun in some ways to shoot? Because it, it was watching two actors really just give everything and sort of just let go, which is always such a pleasure for an audience member to see. But how how is it to shoot those sequences as an actress? Um, for, for this one where he slapped himself, it was the, the second day of shooting. So for me, I, I was really happy that it was so intense and ready because I, you know, I had only three weeks to prepare, so I was still looking for Alice, and you were there, you know, so strong and so. And actually, it was this thing was not really fun because he was actually doing it, and it was so intense and so in it that it was impressive for me too. So, yeah, it was. But you know, it's a pleasure because when you have this kind of scenario of role and you can go really far and you know have fun and. And also with Josephine, we were always trying to find, you know, the, the moment, the moment, the truth. And it was, yeah, for me on set, it was really cool, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't mean to make you blush, Emily, but I mean, it is a fantastic central performance. So Josephine, when I just wondering, you mentioned about her ability to, to balance the kind of comedy and the drama, but... I just wondered in, when you were doing the auditioning for this role, because obviously it's such an integral piece of the puzzle to get right. Um, where, at what point you went, right, I finally found my Alice. And what was it about Emily that made you think she is the perfect person to take on this character? So we, um, that thanks to Emily, um, Elise McLeod, who's um, the casting agent, um, I was having some trouble finding, you know, um, with Alice, it was very short before the shoot. And um, she said, oh, I know someone I think would be amazing. And, we, and I met with Emily. And then, um, she, then I called back Martin to do a, um, a uh, uh, it, there was a lot, there was, yeah. And so he came to Paris to do a reading with her. And I got Emily to do, read, I, read, actually wasn't, I don't think I actually planned to do this, but we started reading through the script and then we just kept going. And she just like did the whole film and it was like, Okay, and I knew then it was like, okay, this is it. This is this is Alice, and so I we asked um, Emily to take a walk around the block, <laughs> so Martin and I could talk, and um, and then she came back and I offered her the role. That was how quick it happened. Because it also remember I was I I had like planned the shoot, you know, like it was like I'm shooting this, I don't care because I just sort of lost the plot, and um, so it was this crazy, you know. Whereas Martin had been on you know, he'd been attached to the project for maybe, I don't know, like, oh, it was the year before. So literally six months or seven months. And then Emily came on like right at the end. Mm. And in regards to casting Jules, who obviously the, the role went to your son, Josephine. Um, 
was that an I was that an idea from the start, or were you casting for that role? And then originally, and then initially, and then um, sorry, eventually decided right, I'm going to give it to to my young boy, or was it always the idea from the start so that your oh, it, would play the character? His birth was the reason that there is a child in that screenplay, and the whole thing came together because of the child. So it's sort of interesting. It's all it's actually all thanks to Jules because. That was the third act, you know. Suddenly, that was what we were able to, you know. Um, the whole third act comes is is, is revolved around the child is revolved around Jules. So um, he was always and and also, I mean, I don't know. I guess if I'd had a producer and done it traditionally, maybe there would have been, you know, talks about. But for me, it was always it was written for him, you know. So yeah, I mean, and and the apartment, you know, the whole thing, you know, that it was just a great apartment to shoot in. I had this apartment in in uh, fr you know Paris that had these balconies and this light and it was just like I could shoot it you know so a lot of it came from my short film days you just sort of use what you have around you um to create the story mm. and yeah. how was it directing your your son on set I mean and did you have to did you have to find the differentiate between being a director and a mother was it actually quite helpful to be both when 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 you were shooting um yeah in some ways maybe it was because I had it was helpful because I had access to his bedroom in the middle of the night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because we could shoot him sleeping and all of that. Um, but, um, but actually probably it would, I would say maybe, especially at that age, it's more difficult because, you know, everyone knows that kids cry around their mothers more than anyone else. They whine, they complain that, you know, they, um, but you know, um, Emily Martin and Chloe were all fantastic with Jules. So we we're really, you know, able to, that was a huge help because they were so good with him, you know, they could really pull out them, you know, make him feel, and, and he adored them all. He loved having all these people in his house. And so, yeah. Uh, yeah, we never, we never grow out of that either. Even now, every time anything bad happens, I'm always, the first thing I do is call my mum and just complain down the phone as well, so. Of yeah. course, I know, we all do it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, because that's what you mentioned, obviously, you had this kind of, it, it sort of touched into your, um, your short film days. And like you said, it was all, it felt like using the apartment, you shooting with your son and stuff. Can you see, is that how you just want to work going forward? And do you think that might become harder to, to keep hold of the more, let's say the kind of more successful your career gets and the more, a bigger budget the films become for example do you think that it's going to be more of a challenge to keep hold of that kind of that sort of short film days and but do you want to i mean i i i hope not i mean you know call me in 10 years and i can answer that yeah. i mean i i hope not i do know that i think you know that i i see that just energetically you know when something calls my creativity and my passion i have endless energy you know i can just keep going and that's I feel like that is the heart of any kind of, I don't know, artist, but certainly director. You've just got to, you know, I, I can't fake that passion. And I think everything comes from there. And I hope to work with people who, you know, can, you know, who and, and material that, you know, brings that out in me. But I mean, in terms of, you know, I want to work with budgets. I want to work with, you know, I mean, you know, pay people and do it. I mean that, you know, definitely and, and have the movie seen, you know, like I want, all I, that's so that's what's different because you know when you're doing on things on small scales and small budgets you know it's everything's a, you know it's a it's such hard work and you're doing everything yourself and so this you know definitely I just want to be able to focus even more on the work hopefully as yeah. I go on hopefully yeah. that's the dream <laughs> yeah and Emily we were speaking before about um the uh, how much sort of layered and brilliant a role Alice would be to get your teeth stuck into um and obviously i just i just have to watch lots of movies from all over the world as part of my job and i always find french cinema is often the home for some of the best female roles um do, is that something that is that something you'd agree with i mean do you, is that something that's acknowledged in france i mean obviously they they can always still be more and they we can always still uh, do better but from my perspective i do tend to see better roles for women in France than I something I would do in the, in the British film industry and certainly in Hollywood. But um, yeah, is that something that you would agree with or do you still think that there's still a lot more to be done to, 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 for, for women in, in France and, and in the industry? Well, I don't know. Actually, my, the, the, the really, the actresses in the role in France uh, who I watched a lot and who I, I, I loved when I, uh, was younger. It was all. I think it was all from US or UK. I, I, of course, there is some. I don't. I'm not sure. I I agree because 
I think about some, maybe uh, uh, Isabella Gianni or some actresses uh, in Camille Claudel, in La Reine Margot, or in uh, some really strong old school women. But in the, other, in the other end, I think a lot of uh, times it's, we are on the, the desire that inspire the actresses and not in the, in the deep um, um, mind of the, of the women. I, I, I'm not sure if I'm clear, but in France, I think there is a lot of for, I mean, it's the same in the UK and US, but it's, there, there are more, I don't know, maybe courageous in the uh, other forms than in France. I don't know. I think there is more uh, male vision, director vision. It's different now because there is more uh, women director and, and more stronger maybe from 10 years now. But not sure, actually. Mm. And Josephine, can you can you can you see yourself making more films in in France and and, and in the French film industry, or, or have you got plans to to direct all over the world? I definitely. I mean, all the stuff I'm reading and all the kind of offers and all that. It's all in in, in English speaking. Um, but definitely, I mean, you know, I've had a couple of projects come. I've come, that are sort of like um, co-productions with France and. I'd love, you know, I'd love an excuse to go back and work in France. I don't think it's funny because I left France because I didn't have money to pay rent. You know, I sort of was forced back to come back to my home and I'm loving it. Like, I'm just loving it. So I sort of like, I would, I don't think I'd ever want to live in France again, you know, and I was there for a long time. So, but yeah, I mean, you know, I lived there for so long and I, and you know, there's so many things I love about France and Paris is so beautiful and there's so much beauty in France and France, you know, it's such an interesting culture and it's, you know, um, yeah it all depends on the material i'll go wherever the good it's i'll go to zimbabwe i don't care if it's good material you know so yeah definitely i would go back to france and shoot absolutely yeah. <laughs> so my final question really was just about what projects you've both kind of got in the pipeline and and sort of if 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 they've been if, if they are projects that have had to be paused or put on hold because of because of lockdown and how you've kind of found the lockdown experience um as as creative sort of people is have you found it to be quite a good moment to kind of reflect or has it been quite frustrating in some ways um i've i i um you know aside from you know my thoughts about the actual lockdown just for myself personally i really i really like i had so much going on and it was just constant and then going a lot to the states and i had a trip planned to new york and meetings and and which is all really exciting but it's like especially after doing alice and getting through the deliveries and getting through all that i was like I was sort of happy that the world stopped so I could step off and, you know, just and spend time with my son. And I was just like, it was actually really good. And it, of course there's always this pressure. I should be writing the next great screenplay because this is the time to do it, um, which didn't happen. Um, but yeah, so I, yeah, I, yes. But now I'm, it's like, you know, are you kidding me? Actors aren't allowed to touch. How do you, you know, shoot a movie? I mean, and also dealing with the, you know, the U S Australian thing, because a lot of the stuff, I'm dealing with in LA and um, so that's like what's going on you know I don't know how we're gonna resolve all this I mean there's a lot of talks on you know we'll see but yeah that's uh, that's a little scary frankly and then other stuff that's said in you know China you know China and the Nepal and there's scripts that go all over the world and it's like well can I this is amazing but is it going to be possible you know that's very scary yeah yeah Oh. Yeah, but for me, I was I was in the, the country, so I was actually I was really happy to be in the nature, and uh, you know it was perfect, kind of perfect. But also I should have been to uh, in Avignon Festival in this month with two wonderful plays. So I'm kind of you know it's it's kind of weird. But I I, I had a, a shooting we uh, that we started in March. So we had the, I had the, my first COVID shooting in July last so I just finished it with all the people with the, the masks and it was kind of weird, but we know, you know, it was also a joyful to continue and to succeed to shoot a movie, but it was also kind of weird. That, uh, Were you allowed to touch each other? Like if the actors, you know, if you're in scenes, you need to touch each other? Yeah, only the actors. Yeah. Okay. Did you have uh, to get tested? Sorry? Did you have to get tested? No. Okay. No, no, just we, yeah, yeah just we okay. had to 
have the mask and you know but yeah well, so we did it and it's over so it's in the you know and uh so now maybe i'm waiting for the theater opening again and i will uh, also be part of, uh, of the jury in la mostra de valencia because it's where i, I got a, an award uh, last year with honors so in october i hope the festival will uh will happen and uh, say i will go part of the jury it's, it's really cool yeah which is i'm just so pleased that alice was predated all of this because it meant you guys oh, had your hallelujah. Yeah, you had your kind of festival run. Because I know there's some films coming out at the moment that are going on video on demand that have almost been deprived of a, a worldwide global tour of the movie where they go and speak to press and they do film festivals and Q&A. So it's great for you guys that a film as, oh God, as, as good as Alice was, was, was able to be received on the festival circuit and by big masses of oh, people. So that's quite a relief. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I thank the sky every day for that because we really did just get in. I mean, I just moved back to Australia. I was about to be back in um, Paris to, you know, clear up all my stuff and then everything got locked down. So it was like, oh, you know, I, everything just happened in time. So yeah, who knows? Yeah. Cool. Well, very, I'm very pleased. Very it, it, yeah, it just definitely deserves to be seen by as many people as possible. But thank you so much for your time today. It's been such a great pleasure speaking to you both. Yeah, and thank I've, you. Uh, yeah, it's so funny. I can see Josephine just slowly getting darker, I know. And darker behind you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I brought this lamp. I'm yeah. Glad this <laughs> yeah, it's getting yeah. a bit Blair Witch project now. So anyway, um, yeah. <laughs> but thank you so much, and best of luck with with the rest of the the journey this movie has to go on. And hopefully, one day we'll be able to do an interview like this in person if the world get back if the world gets back to normal again. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank yes, you. thanks so much, guys. Take thank care. You. Um, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!